rest of the dancers, we need to get some more out here. Oh, they, these young kids look like they're, you know. Yeah. But, uh, you know, some of the great songs, if you go, uh, go see Great Balls of Fire, because uh, you think Jerry Lee Lewis is nuts, he is. <laughs> That's why. And you hear some of the great songs of the 50s in that movie. But I, I say, uh, there's a couple, three favorite artists that uh, I have, and um, I don't mean to embarrass this young lady, but uh, she met all of Margaret's family here tonight, or most of them, but uh, I was with a show called The Taylor Sisters, and we started the show in 1964, and the show stopped in 1976. And um, Ani, was happened to be part of that show with us for a long time. She's one of the best five-string banjo players I've ever heard. And I'd like to introduce her tonight. We haven't seen each other. We didn't see each other for about 13 years. And then she came back to town, and we've kind of kept in touch ever since. So would you make her feel welcome right over here, Miss Ani Barr. And she's originally from Lincoln, Nebraska, too. Southeast Asia and Vietnam, and we can get us started on the Vietnam stories. We'll be here all night. There were some sad ones, but there was a lot of funny ones, too. <laughs> she and I like the idea with all those men. <laughs> and uh, I mean to tell you, we even look good over there. <laughs> right. We'd get off the plane in the different places, and they'd say, round eyes. <laughs> song quickly from that era. Uh, Ani will remember this. We took an old song. One of the most requested ones was the guys would want to hear Silver Wings leaving on a jet plane and this one, the green, green grass of home. But it was sad enough over there that we changed the words to it. The old outhouse is still standing. Though all the paint is cracked and dry. Be careful how they say that, Catherine. <laughs> and down the lane I'd run. Sometimes I'd make it. <laughs> Sometimes I didn't. I'd have to fake it. And that's why we had such green, green grass and home. And 
the drum roll was on, the lights were not on as yet, and the boys said, this man has sold 25 million singles. No, it was like 25 million albums and a million seller single out of each album. That's scary when you think about it. And then the lights went on. There was a 23-piece orchestra, a five-piece combo up front, and there was uh, the Imperial uh, female quartet and the Jordanaires male quartet and Elvis. And I thought, well, my God, with all that, I'd sound good, too. <laughs> but the funny part of it up was when he came out on stage, he didn't need all that. He had a charisma, and he was a terrific entertainer and a great singer. And I didn't find that out till I saw him live. But a little bit of a story about a boy from East Tupelo, Mississippi. And I do this especially for Margaret. And I gotta take you down memory lane just a little bit. I won't turn it back out. I mean, y'all get out here and start dancing. Did you find the right room? <laughs> okay. You two, no, yours is on the other side, I think. the story behind Elvis Presley. He, they were very poor folks and they moved from East Tupelo when Elvis was fairly young and they moved to uh, Memphis. And they were so poor that they uh, lived in a housing project with six other families and they shared one bathroom. Now that's poor folks. Elvis went to work after school driving a truck so he could help support the family and that was his mom and dad and himself. He entered a lot of music contests and he saved up his money and he went down to Sam Phillips at uh, Sun Recording Studio and he gave him 10 bucks because his mother's birthday was coming up and he wanted to do a song for her. And that was where the legend started was in that studio. The song went like this. Well, that's all right, my mama. That's all right for you. Said that's all right, my mama. Or just any way you'll do, that's all right. That's all right. That's all right, my mama. Yeah, anyway, you do. And the legend of Elvis was born. Now when he's going to take that thing away, I'm going to put my glasses off so I can't see. <laughs> okay. And Ani, playing five-string banjo, her forte of music is bluegrass. Now, I always did a real surprising thing. He took a bluegrass song, and he turned it into rock and roll on the flip side of That's All Right, Mama. What's something like this? I said, blue moon, I can't tell you to the moon shine. Shine all when the moon is gone to love me. I said, blue moon, I can't tell you to keep on shining. Shine all when the moon is gone. He went to audition for the Grand Ole Opry, and they, uh, the president of the CMA Association said, we don't want that lewd kind of dancing on the opry stage, and they refused it. And Elvis said, I'll never appear on the opry, and he never did. And after that, the old hawkster himself, Mr. Tom Parker, got a hold of Elvis. That's the only thing good that happened out of Nashville for Elvis, basically. And, um, Got him on the Ed Sullivan Show. First, the Tommy and Jimmy Dorsey hour. And I don't know how many of you remember the Ed Sullivan Show. The night that Elvis was on, my mom kept shutting the TV off. Because that, this is true. Because that lewd man was going to be on. <laughs> and I was planted right in front of it. <laughs> and uh, Mother turned it off. Well, she saw his first song and didn't think it was too bad. She said, well, maybe it it's all right. It went like this. Well, since my baby left me, I found a new place to dwell. It's down at the end of Lonely Street. That's a heartbreak hotel. I'll give you some. I'll give you 